I'm making an assumption. If you're here, you're using filler words like uh, um, so at the beginning of your utterances or right, you know, at the end of your utterances. You're not just doing this once in a while. It's become excessive. And that's what we want to do today. We want to bring that down. Instead of telling you what to do though, I'm going to give you three options and I'm going to share tips on each option to help you decide which one do you think is best for you to use. And of course, we're going to do some practice exercises together to help you get started. The clap method. First, figure out how often you use filler words with the clap method. Ask someone close to you to clap whenever you use a filler word. This may feel strange at first, but once you get used to it, it's a simple way to figure out how many filler words you use in your daily conversations. There are different ways that people can give you feedback after every filler word you use. Clapping is one example, but drawing your attention to a behavior increases that behavior. This means that you could end up using even more filler words. Now, if you like this idea of getting feedback, put a twist on it. Have someone give you feedback after every utterance that you don't use any filler words. Here's an example and you can join in with me. I can give myself feedback. I can clap after every utterance with no filler words. Giving myself feedback raises my self-awareness. What did you think of that twist for giving yourself feedback? Instead of saying an um or ah or whatever your favorite filler is, replace it with the word period or pause. And I literally want you to practice this out loud. That's what I recommend. So today we're going to change the brakes on our car, period. It's good advice to replace using filler words with a new habit. However, what about for filler words that tend to occur at the beginning of an utterance? It isn't going to work so well to use the word period or pause. If you like this option, you could use a transition word instead at the beginning of an utterance. I'm going to give you some examples that will illustrate using both transition words at the beginning and period at the end. First of all, think of some transition words to begin an utterance, period. As a second point, using transition words reduces using filler words to begin an utterance, period. The best way to use a transition word is to capture attention, period. What did you think of that addition to that option? I'm now speaking and I get to a comma. I close my mouth, I breathe, and I do not open my mouth until I've come up with an actual word that I'm going to say next. Think about this third option. Close your mouth until you think of what you're going to say next. This gives you a chance to pause. It also stops you from vocalizing. If your mouth is open, you're more likely to keep making a sound like, uh, it even cues you to stop vocalizing when your mouth is closed. Things like humming, like, um, or, um, it just kind of brings your awareness so that you're clued in to go, oh, stop the vocalizing. You could also close your mouth to begin an utterance and then start speaking. Let's give this option a try. Here's how we're going to start. We're going to close our mouth, share a fact about yourself, and then close your mouth. Here's an example. I live in Canada. 
This time we're going to practice with some consecutive utterances. We're going to share three facts about ourselves. I work with both adults and kids. I co-parent a toy poodle. On weekends, I enjoy climbing the mountains. Over to you.